It is finally time, boys and girls. The video we have all been waiting for. I have teased this project for months. You have seen the desk in the background of all my videos since July 10th, 2020. But it is finally time. In the blue corner, we have the Intel Gaming PC packed with the 11900K and the EVGA RTX 3090. Over in the red corner, we got the AMD Streaming PC packed with the Threadripper 3990X and the EVGA RTX 3080. Who will win? Well, actually neither, since both of them will be going in the same PC case. So would you guys wish there was one RGB software to control all of your devices? How awesome would that be? Well, actually that already exists. Signal RGB lets you control and sync your favorite RGB devices from any brand with one application. Signal RGB is a free RGB platform driven by the community with support for over 170 of the best RGB devices from leading brands like Razer, Corsair, SteelSeries, and more. No more will you have to settle for the same brand of gear just to use the same software. With Signal RGB, you can finally go with the gear you've always wanted. The software is really easy to use. Once you have it installed on your PC, it will automatically detect all the compatible devices you have connected to it. You can then customize the lighting however you want. You can select from a bunch of preloaded effects from the dashboard screen, or you can even make your own from scratch. Some examples include having the lighting mirror the content that's on your monitor, which is awesome if you're watching movies. Now, if you're listening to music, you can have the lighting react to the beats. And my personal favorite is the game integrations, where you have the lighting react to the actual gameplay. This is pretty damn sweet, so check this out. So let's say you're playing CSGO. You can have the lights turn red once the bomb is planted, and if you end up winning the match, you can set the colors to green. Or if you play Minecraft and lose some health, you can customize the lights to blink red when that happens. I mean, these are just a few examples of what you can really do. I highly recommend this if you guys are tired of using a bunch of different software to control the lighting in your setup. Definitely check them out by visiting my link below and see if your devices are supported. They are also constantly adding support for new devices all the time. Man, it feels so good to finally start on this project, you guys. You have no idea how patient I've been for the longest time. All right, I've been waiting my entire life for this moment. We finally have all the parts to begin the dual PC build. Uh, I feel like my patience is gonna pay off for sure. Once I'm done with this project, it's gonna be one of the coolest PC desk projects you've seen on YouTube, mark my words. So the purpose of this project is to build the ultimate streaming setup. I want to be able to game and stream comfortably without any compromise. So I'll be building two separate high-end systems inside the Lian Li DK05, which is a sit and stand PC desk. We got the Intel system for strictly gaming, and then we got the AMD Threadripper rig for streaming and productivity. I'll be getting the best of both worlds with this setup, and I'm so damn excited to show you guys what it's gonna look like. So this will be a three-part series, unfortunately, because it is gonna be a very long project because it's gonna be water-cooled, so there's gonna be a lot, a lot of steps involved, and I don't wanna bore you guys with a two-hour long video, so I think it'd be better to kind of split it into separate videos, and you guys can choose which videos you wanna watch. So uh, part one will be pretty much going over the part selection, and then we'll begin the build. Part two will be the completion, and then part three, which is the finale, will be the final reveal and the uh, hands-on process to show you guys not only what the system looks like while it's turned on, but also how the streaming is gonna look uh, and feel with everything powered on. So with all that said, let's start off with the gaming PC parts. Now, fortunately, I don't have the new Intel Core 11th Gen processor box with me, so I'm just using one of my older ones. We are going with the new Intel Core i9 11900K processor instead, which is Intel's latest and greatest CPU currently available for the Z590 platform. We got 8 cores and 16 threads with a boost clock of up to 5.3 gigahertz. But of course, I'll be manually overclocking this thing to the max since we're throwing this underwater. The 11900K is going into the MSI MPG Z590 Carbon. This board is an absolute monster. It is a collab between MSI and EK and it comes with a built-in monoblock. They're calling this the most affordable liquid-cooled motherboard on the market. In other words, it would cost you a lot more to buy the board and monoblock separately. So if you buy the Z590 Carbon, you are essentially not only saving money, but you also get the convenience factor. You don't have to stress about compatibility issues. 
The carbon also comes with a 16 plus 1 plus 1 power design with two 8-pin EPS connectors up top that will aid in a stable and high overclock. And aesthetically, I think this board just looks insane. We got that all black stealthy look with carbon fiber accents, a flow meter built inside the model block. I mean, how many model blocks have you guys seen with a flow meter? Like seriously. And it even comes with EK's leak tester kit, which is awesome. The motherboard goes for 500 bucks and you also get a $65 coupon inside that you can use on the EK website, which is pretty cool. All right, so moving on to memory. Since this is a gaming PC, we don't really need a lot of memory, so we're just gonna throw in 64 gigs of RAM, running at 3600 megahertz with a CL16 timing. The Trident Z Neos are currently the fastest memory sticks I have here at the office with this capacity. So for storage, I wanna keep things simple and avoid traditional SSDs and uh, hard drives altogether to minimize cable clutter as well. So we are sticking with M.2 SSDs for the entire build. We have a total of 24 terabytes of M.2 storage from uh, Sabrent, but we'll be tossing in 16 terabytes to the gaming PC since that's where all the games will be installed. And then eight terabytes will go into the, uh, the streaming PC. Since this is strictly a gaming system, we gotta throw in the best graphics card in the market. Hence why we are going with the EVGA RTX 3090 FTW3. Now the goal is to achieve over 144 FPS in maxed out settings while streaming, and then 4K resolution over 100 FPS while offline. Moving on to the streaming and workstation PC. My goal over here is to build the fastest streaming PC possible, and to do that, I have to go with the fastest CPU available to consumers that has the highest core count as well. Well, I didn't have to look far to find the AMD Threadripper 3990X. This is a 64 core, 128 thread processor. Oh yeah, we're gonna have fun with this one. We're putting that inside the MSI Creator TRX40 motherboard. It's got 16 phases of digital power and power stage with eight DIMM slots. That means we're gonna be occupying all eight slots, you guys, with a total of 64 gigs of RAM. That is eight sticks of eight gigabytes each, running at 3600 megahertz with CL16 timing. Now, since the PC will only be for streaming and editing videos, we don't really need a beefy graphics card, which is why I'm only putting in a Peasant RTX 3080. Now, you guys might be wondering why I'm sticking with only NVIDIA cards. Well, it's quite simple, really. I wanna be able to take advantage of NVIDIA DLSS, which uses deep learning to increase graphics performance using dedicated Tensor Core AI processors. Basically, it uses deep learning to boost frame rates and generate beautiful sharp images for your games. Powering both systems are two EVGA 1000 G3s. These are 80 plus gold certified power supplies. And since they are fully modular, of course I'll be going with custom black sleeve cables from CableMod to fit the theme of the build a lot better. So those are all the main components, but of course we'll be water cooling the whole thing using EK's latest quantum series. And we also have a bunch of distro plates that were made specifically for the Lian Lee DK05 case. So yeah, these are all the parts I'll be using for the build. Super excited to get started. Let's begin. All right, ladies and gentle germs. So I guess we can start off with the streaming PC and then we'll do the gaming one right after. We are basically prepping the board before we place it inside the case. Now, before I even do that, I actually wanna test my components to make sure everything works because I don't wanna run into the same issue that I ran into a couple weeks ago where where I built the PC and I was getting no output to display. It turns out I just needed to do a BIOS flash, but I wanna make sure I'm safe uh, before I plug everything in this time. Because obviously if the PC doesn't work or there's something's wrong with the system at the end, it's gonna be really difficult to drain all that coolant out and try, try and troubleshoot. So better be safe than sorry. All right, we have our board. Let's actually put this upside down. Oh, this thing is hefty. You a hefty boy. And then we got our 3990X. I think I've only used this CPU in one other build when the 3090 first came out, if you guys remember. Since then, it's just been sitting on my shelves, really doing nothing. So finally, I get to put it to good use. So the Threadrip CPU goes in a little differently compared to the um, AM4 and LGA 11 series sockets from Intel. We have to actually use this tool that it comes with to remove the cover. So we're gonna go backwards from three to one. There's three. There's two. And there's Uno. And the cover should pop right up. There you go. 
Then we're gonna lift up the cover with these uh, two tabs and then remove this gray protective cover. Oh, did I bend? Did I bend a pin? Nope, no, we are good. All right, now it's time to slide in the CPU. Let's remove this cover also. All right, drop it down, close it up, and we are good to tighten it. So now we're gonna go backwards. We're gonna tighten the screw until we hear the tool click. There you go. And that's three. So I just realized the motherboard actually comes with this what is this even called? M.2 expander. You can hook up four additional M.2 SSDs on here in addition to the three already supplied by the motherboard. This is obviously gonna add a little bit more heft to the board, but luckily we're not gonna, we're not, we're not gonna even need that since we're only sticking to a single eight terabyte M.2 SSD, which is more than plenty just for the streaming PC because the only thing I'm gonna really put on there is OBS and whatever streaming applications I'm gonna need. The games are going to be on the actual gaming PC. So even eight terabytes is overkill for this system, to be honest. Actually, this entire system is overkill. Who am I kidding? What? This thing has dual layers of thermal pads? All right. All right, so I guess I'll take this time to install the CPU block before I move on to the memory sticks. So we are going with the EK Quantum Velocity CPU block for the TR4 socket. Oh, we're actually gonna get really good coverage. Look how massive this CPU block is, you guys. All right, let's go ahead and apply some EK Thermal Paste. I like to spread towards the top as much as I can. I'm actually gonna use the entire tube just because we have a lot more surface to work with. And then I'm gonna use my spatula to spread the paste from the top to bottom, make sure it's evenly covered. This is also very therapeutic for me. It's one of the reasons why I like spreading my paste, but I'm sure you guys already know that. There's a little bit extra on the edges there, which kind of spilled and that's completely normal. I'd rather have a lot more than a lot less. All right, that looks good enough. So this is actually gonna be a really easy installation because the block basically sits on the actual socket. So there isn't any additional bracket installation needed. So I'm just gonna lower this down, align the screw holes. And that's it. I'm just gonna tighten them up. Actually, you know what? I don't like this cable over here on the bottom. Why do you guys do this? Honestly, even Corsair does it. Like the cable is coming down from the bottom. There we go. So now we got the cable going towards the top. This is actually the uh, five volt three pin RGB header that plugs into the board to light up the CPU block. Okay, block is installed. Time for the memory. We are going with total 64 gigabytes. So we got eight gigabyte per stick, just so we can fill up all of the uh, eight DIMM slots. Trident ZYLs, currently the fastest sticks I have at the office. Also good looking sticks. They're gonna, it's gonna fit the theme of the build perfectly. These are also CL16 timing, so perfect for Threadripper. I don't think I've held this many memory sticks in my hand before. Damn, that is a massive stack. <laughs> I believe we're also getting quad channel support on these sticks. Ooh. 
Ooh, look at that. That's insane. All right. The streaming PC is officially prepped. Let's put this to the side and work on our gaming PC. All right. So you guys might be wondering at this point, what am I gonna do with the PC once I'm done building it, right? Is it just gonna sit in the back of the office? Am I gonna take it home? Am I, am I gonna actually use it? I don't know, actually. I don't have an answer to that, to be honest. It's way too big for me to move. It's definitely gonna be here at the office, but I don't really game at the office. This is just strictly for work. I game, uh, I game at home with my setup. So I don't really have a purpose for it, to be honest. We'll see, we'll see what I'll, uh, what I'll do because I definitely don't want to take it apart. After I spend all this time building it, it's going to be almost a waste to take it apart, you know? I don't know, we'll see guys. I'll, um, I'll brainstorm some ideas. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comment section what you want me to do with the, with the desk. I am definitely up for um, suggestions. All right, so we're going to do the same thing here. A little bit, oops, a little bit on the top. I don't need that much for this CPU. And then just spread it. There you go, perfect. So since we're installing a model block, we obviously have to cover the VRMs with some thermal pads. That way they don't overheat. This basically helps with heat dissipation and every model block comes with these. So all we gotta do is measure and then cut them to length. All right, I think we're ready to lower the block. See, MSI does it right. Look where the cable's coming out of. It's coming out from the top. All right, now we're gonna have to flip this over and then tighten it from the back. So monoblock officially installed. Now we can move on to storage. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. There is nothing that's going to make me use up all 16 terabytes of space. Not even my entire hentai collection, if I'm being honest. So this entire second eight terabyte storage, I feel like it's just gonna be for backup. But in the spirit of overkill, I guess it does make sense. So we do have it, why not use it? Last but not least, we have our memory sticks. Now in order to achieve 64 gigabytes, obviously with only four DIMM slots, we have to go with 16 gigabyte modules. So each of these are 16 gigs running at 3600 megahertz. And uh, I think it's also seal 16. Yep, seal 16 timing, just like the Threadripper build. Oh yeah, these are gonna look so damn amazing once it's all lit up. As far as the color scheme, I don't think I've actually decided yet. It's mostly black and gray with some gunmetal um, gray accents, but in terms of like the coolant and the RGB lighting, I don't exactly know what I'm gonna go with. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comment section what you like to see. All right guys, so both boards have been prepped and ready to go. We're actually making some pretty good progress so far. Um, I'm gonna take this time to test all the components, including the power supply and the graphics card to make sure everything's functioning, and then I will see you very soon. All right, so I got all the parts hooked up to both systems. Uh, let's go ahead and test the Intel PC first. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a power button on the motherboard, so I'm gonna have to turn it on using a uh, screwdriver. Please, please just give me BIOS, that's all I want. 
show me your work and I will be happy. Just give me BIOS. Just give me BIOS or anything. Any type of display. Oh, looks like it restarted itself. Okay. You show me something, maybe. Come on. I don't even have the graphics card plugged in. What an imbecile, Ed. What are you even doing with your life? Like, seriously. The fans are spinning, power supplies are. Oh! We are good to go on the Intel system. Man, I almost gave me a, a mini heart attack. Okay. We're gonna shut you off right now. And we're gonna test the Threadripper system. So the Threadripper PC is actually a lot easier because there's a power button right on the board. Come on, baby. Two for two. And I will sleep really good tonight. Yes, yes. Oh man, what a relief that is. What a relief that is. All right, let me turn that off before the CPU overheats. Ladies and gentlemen, we are good to go. Let's proceed with the build. All right, first thing I wanna do is hook up the power supply. So I'm gonna to have to remove this bracket back here. We're using the same power supply, so it doesn't really matter what side I put this in. They're both 1000 watts with the exact same cable extensions. So I'm gonna have the, um, the fan from the power supply facing towards the inside of the case because the opposite side has no ventilation so it doesn't make sense with that layout. And then we're gonna do the same exact thing for this power supply as well. I haven't really decided which side to put the gaming PC and which side to put the uh, the streaming PC. I guess it really doesn't matter, to be honest, since they're fairly close to each other anyways. All right, so both motherboard trays are officially out. It's gonna be a lot easier to install the boards on there. But before I hook that up, I think I should probably hook up one of the digital plates in the back here. So these tiny little guys are the EK Quantum Reflection Digital Plates. They're basically tiny reservoirs with built-in D5 pumps. And this is where I'll be filling the coolant from. Originally, I was gonna use a full-size cylinder res for the build, but honestly, this kind of eliminates the need for that. Plus, it's gonna be a lot cleaner because you don't have this massive cylinder or two massive cylinders in the middle of the case. So I'm going to be sticking with this. Plus the tube runs are going to be a lot cleaner because it gives me multiple options on the top to, um, to do my tube runs. So yeah, I'll be sticking with these. All right, so I hooked up both of the digital plates. I left it a little loose, that way I can adjust the positioning of them, just so I can make sure that the tubes align perfectly with the, uh, with the ports. All right guys, so I am super, super tired. I'm actually about to faint, so I'm gonna call it right here for part one. We've actually made some pretty good progress so far, so I'm really happy with the way the build is turning out. We haven't run into any issues so far, so you know, knock on metal. Uh, everything is going according to plan. Most likely the issues will happen in part two, knowing my luck. But if you guys are enjoying the series so far and you're excited for part two, make sure to let me know by smacking that like button. I know for a fact cable management is gonna be a nightmare in this case. I am not looking forward to that. There's, there's literally just cables 
coming out of every crevice of the build. So it's gonna it's gonna take some extra love and care for sure. But anyways, I'm done here. I'm gonna go home and get some rest. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one.